In this video, you'll learn how to create and manage a multi-module Maven project. Let's start by generating a parent POM file. We'll use a Maven archetype to do so. An archetype is like a template for creating Maven projects. It allows us to pass in parameters to customize the output for our needs. First, we'll specify Maven archetype generate. This tells Maven to create a new project based on the parameters we'll pass in. First, let's specify the name of the archetype we'll be using to generate our parent POM. We'll use the dash D archetype group ID equals org codehouse mojo archetype. This specifies the group ID of the archetype we'll be using. I'm working on a Linux system, so I'll use the backslash character, which continues the line. It makes things more readable on the video, but do what works best for you. Next is the artifact ID for the archetype. It's set to pom root. This will create just a pom file for our parent project. It won't create any source or test directories. Next is the version of the archetype we want to use, which is release. And finally, we'll specify our project information. Our group ID will be com.beginsecure. Our artifact, the name of our project main module, will be module-expert, and we'll set the interactive mode to false, so every parameter we didn't specify will be just the default value. And let's press return. It takes a moment to generate our project. We can see all the parameters, both specified and default, used to create our project, along with the happy news that our build was successful. Let's see what it did for us. Running ls, we see it created a directory with our module name, module-expert. We can run the tree command, or if you prefer, the find space dot command. And there we see only one file, the pom.xml file that was created. This archetype did not create any source directory, which is what we want. Parent POMs are used to manage subprojects, which will contain the source code. Let's change directories into our new module and use VS Code to see our project so far by running code space dot. If you don't have VS Code installed, I have videos for installing it on Linux, Windows, and Mac in the description below this video. The POM file that was generated is quite short. The most important thing here is the packaging module is specified as POM. When the packaging is set to POM, it indicates that the project is a parent project in a multi-module project. This type of project does not typically produce any artifacts, such as jars, wars, or ears. Instead, it's used to group other sub-projects or modules and provide common configuration settings that can be inherited by the child modules. So let's do that. Let's add some configuration to this POM file that will flow down to the children. Let's add a property section so we can define some variables. First, let's add project.build.sourceencoding and we'll set it to UTF-8. Next, let's set project reporting output encoding also to UTF-8. We'll set a property, java.version, and make it 17. This property acts as a central point to manage the Java version throughout all our modules. And finally, let's set Maven compiler source equal to the Java version property we just set. This means that our code will be using Java 17 syntax and features. And lastly, Maven compiler target will also be set to 17. This ensures that the compiled bytecode is suitable for running on a Java 17 runtime environment. I have autosave turned on but you might need to hit the Control or Command S to save your file. Now that we've set the properties for the project, let's go back to the command line. And from within the parent project directory, let's generate two subprojects using the Maven Quick Start archetype. We'll run Maven archetype generate once again. This time the group ID for our archetype is org Apache Maven archetypes. And the artifact ID is Maven archetype quick start. The version is release. And now let's specify the parameters for our first submodule. Our group ID will be com.beginsecure. Our artifact will be called core. The package, which is the root level location of our code, will be com.beginsecure.core just to keep the namespaces in our modules from clashing. We'll set interactive mode to false so everything else will be the default value. 
and let's press enter. It takes just a moment and we see our project was created. Let's use the up arrow key to recall that command and change just two things. We'll use the arrow key to go back and change the end of the package name from core to API, and we'll change the artifact ID name from core to API. And let's press enter to run that command. It takes just a moment and our second subproject is created for us. Let's run the tree command and see what we did. We can see our original POM file at the bottom. Above that is our first subproject called core. It has its own POM file as well as the source main Java and source test Java directory, along with some sample code. Notice it has our core package name. Scrolling up, we can see API is a mirror of core, except for the name. It has the same layouts as the core project. Let's look at the entire project now using VS Code. We'll run code space dot from the command line once again. The first file we see here is the pom.xml file that we were editing just a few minutes ago. Notice there are blank lines everywhere now. This is one of the annoying bugs or features, I'm not sure which, when generating code using the quick start archetype. Nothing changed in the file near the middle and top. However, if we scroll down, we can see a new section called modules was added. And it contains an entry for our core and API modules that we generated. The modules section contains a list of module entries, each representing a child module of the parent project. These entries are typically directory names where each module's own POM file is located, as we'll see in just a moment. When the parent project is built, Maven automatically includes these child modules in the build process. This aggregation ensures that all the modules are compiled, tested, and packaged as part of the overall project lifecycle. Ordered modules in the list can influence the build order, which is particularly important for projects where modules have interdependencies. However, Maven is smart enough to recognize dependencies, so it will override the build order to ensure projects with no dependencies are built first. Let's look at the other POM files that were created. First, under Core, notice the Quick Start archetype added a property section here with really outdated information. Let's delete that and save the file. And let's go to the POM file for the API project and do the same thing and save that file. Recall we set this information in the parent earlier, so the information will now flow from the parent to the children. Now let's go to the command line and run maven clean package to see if our project compiles. Notice all three projects, the parent and the two child projects were built successfully. Let's close out of the command line and go back to the parent POM. One of the great things about parent POMs is we can manage the dependencies and versions from all the projects in one location. Let's add a dependency management block in the parent POM, and then add a dependencies block, and finally a dependency. And let's add a group, artifact, and version, just like we would in any other POM file. We'll add Jackson data bind. The group is com, faster XML, Jackson core, and the artifact is Jackson data bind. We'll add the latest version which at the time of this recording had no reported vulnerabilities, 2.16.0. To make use of this in our child projects, we'll need to go and add the group and artifact. Let's copy what we just added and go to the POM file for the core project. There's already a dependency block there now. Let's simply add what we just copied and then edit it. We'll remove the version information and take what's specified in the parent POM. Similarly, let's remove the dependency version information for JUnit from the child. First, let's copy that. Let's go back to the parent POM and paste in what we just copied. It's good as is. And let's go back to the core POM and get rid of the version and scope information. We'll let what's in the parent POM flow down to the core. And similarly, let's go to the POM file for the API project and get rid of the version and scope information for JUnit. Now let's go back to the command line and run maven clean package once again. And we get build success across the board. There's lots more to explore with multi-module projects, but this introduction will get you productive right away. Let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like to learn more about. Thanks for watching and remember to always begin secure.